There is a case of Mrs. F. X. Y. Z., a 51-year-old female, a housewife from Kengeri, belonging to the lower socio-economic status. Date of admission 29th May 2022, and date of examination was 2nd June 2022. Chief complains swelling over the neck for the past four years. The patient patient came to the OPD with complaints of swelling over the neck for the past four years. History of presenting illness. Patient was apparently normal four years four years ago when she noticed a swelling over the front of the neck, which was insidious in onset and has gradually progressed to the present size. Complaint of discomfort while swallowing is uh, was noted, and no history of pain over swelling, no history of unintentional weight loss, tremors, palpitation, diarrhea, excessive sweating, anxiety, or insomnia. No history of weight gain, lethargy, hair loss, cold intolerance, or constipation. There is no history of difficulty while breathing or hoarseness of voice. No history of bone pain or any other swellings in the body. Past history: Patient is not a known case of uh, diabetes mellitus, TB, hypertension, asthma, or epilepsy. There is no history of previous surgery. No uh, history of uh, drug intake or irradiation. Normal appetite: uh, Mixed appetite. Uh, the patient. Uh, Reports a normal appetite, a mixed diet, excessive com- consumption of vitamins, adequate sleep, regular bowel and bladder movements, and no addictive habits. Menstrual history: Patient attained menarche at the age of 13 years. Regular cycles of every 28 plus or minus two days and of three to four days of flow was noted. Uh, patient also reported a need for three to four cloth pad changes um, for the first four days. Menopause was attained at 50 years of age. Family history: No similar complaints in the family or in the neighborhood. Allergy history: No known allergies. Summary: Here is a 51-year-old housewife presenting with a midline neck swelling. Sorry, so there's a mistake with the neck swelling that has been uh, present for the past four years, gradually increasing in size with no features of hypo or hyperthyroidism, no compressive features noted. What all comes to your mind when the patient just tells that I uh, have a uh, swelling over neck for f- past 4 years sir it um it can either be a per- no, um, swelling over the neck for the past 4 years it has to be a benign swelling sir mm-hmm. what are the benign swellings that's what i'm asking so it could be a simple non toxic goiter so it could either be because of like a physiological goiter pre uh, because of pregnancy or pre puberty 51 years pregnancy no no sir not in this case but Or in this case, it could be a benign adenoma, sir, um, either a follicular or a papillary or medullary adenoma, or it could be a multi-nodular or uh, goiter. Okay, go to the next slide. Okay, patient was all right. Now suddenly she ah uh, four years she's having this swelling. Okay, and you are not written the mention the size. You can't just write the. Uh, prog- uh, gradually progress to the present size. You should at least approximately mention. You, uh, you should ask the patient how big it is uh, in a finger. Uh, you should ask her to show using two fingers and approximate size. You are right. Then we'll uh, understanding whether that uh, swelling is having any compressive features or what is the si- real size of the swelling. We'll understand. So we have to mention the approximate size in the history also. Okay, you can't just write to the present size. Okay. Yes, sir. You should mention at this level. And com- yeah, this is a better way of writing. Complaint of discomfort while swallowing. Okay, so uh, the question here is, uh, what are the causes for sudden? Now here it is a slow progress, you know, swelling. If there is a sudden uh, change or sudden increase in the size of the swelling, what are the causes for that? So it could either be because of a hemorrhage within the swelling or uh, because of malignant swelling. Sir. Okay, either in a benign swelling, if there is a hemorrhage it can uh, cause a sudden increase in the swelling or else if there is a benign swelling now uh, converted to malignant that can also have a rapid growth okay yes. good so next thing so uh, next thing is uh, no history of pain over the swelling so what are the causes for the pain uh, or a thyroid swelling now consider let's consider it as a thyroid swelling only okay at this uh, juncture and yes. we'll discuss about the thyroid so what are the causes for pain or painful goiter So painful goiter could be because of Hashimoto's or deep or what? See, Anandini, when you answer no, you should uh, uh, 
uh, go according to the inc incidents okay which are the common you should tell first okay and the rare ones at the end so for the first cause for uh, painful go goiter pain over the swelling pain over the swelling if there is hemorrhage hemorrhage okay in if there is hemorrhage why it will go uh, how pain not sure. sure see uh, when there is a hemorrhage no it's excessive uh, that's collection it will cause the stretching of the capsule right any stretching of capsule anywhere maybe parotid or uh, renal capsule anywhere the stretching is there that will cause a pain okay there is a one cause good next second thing any inflammation like you said any thyroiditis okay any kind of thyroiditis or inflammation of the thyroid can cause pain third cause is any a malignancy infiltrating to the surrounding structures or into the nerves that can also cause pain so these are the causes for painful goiter next you have asked uh, what is this uh, no history of unintentional weight loss tremors why all this so to rule out hyperthyroidism okay you wanted to know the functional status of the patient yes. uh, either hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism that's why you asked the so uh, see there are so many features you can't include everything so in one line you can write no history suggestive of hyperthyroidism or no history suggestive of hypothyroidism then if the examiner ask what are the features of hyper or hypothyroidism then you can list out okay or else you have listed out uh, listed out three four features and uh, there could be so many else right yes sir so that's other way of writing uh, and then coming to the what is this no history of uh, difficulty while breathing hoarseness of voice why you have asked this So, any to check if any comes uh, symptoms because of the swelling. You are not very clear. Can you be a bit more louder and clear? Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah. Yeah. To check if there any compressive symptoms because very of the swelling. Very good. So, first uh, thing is that we have to confirm it's a thyroid swelling. Okay. First thing, see this is bit uh, uh, your history HOPI is uh, can be little more elaborate. You okay? Here it is a. Uh, so first thing is we have to confirm that it's a. thyroid uh, swelling by three things okay one is uh, typical uh, yeah, site second thing is a shape okay third thing is by it moves with the deglutition the swelling moving with the deglutition all these three are classical features of a thyroid swelling that's the first thing then we can uh, go for the probable etiology okay what is the probable etiology for the uh, thyroid swelling second thing third thing you have to look for the functional status that is whether there is a any features of thyrotoxicosis or there is a hypo myxedema features are there that you have to think fourth thing is any pressure symptoms this thyroid swelling is causing any pressure symptoms what are the nandini in general what are the pressure symptoms possible with which a present a patient may present to you in in general so difficulty in breathe, uh, breathing breathing difficulty while swallowing why difficult in breathing So difficulty in breathing because the swelling may compress the trachea. So okay. So okay then it should be very huge swelling. Okay, small small swellings in small swelling. That's why I told you size is very important. If there is a small swelling, then you say uh, there is no uh, no uh, what is that? No difficulty in while breathing and all. It will be uh, what is that? Uh, uh, jokeful. Okay. So that's why if you mention the size, it's uh, almost a very big nine into five into centimeter swelling. Then the all this uh, importance of Uh, so during the inspection, I have mentioned the size of the swelling. Okay, right. fine. Still in the history also. Okay, should have. So uh, history of difficulty in breathing. That's because of compression or the trachea. Then hoarseness of voice because of. So hoarseness of voice because of um, the involvement of recurrent laryngeal nerve. Recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, usually we should uh, what we have no for undergraduate level that's okay. Uh, but as just compression as such. will not cause any hoarseness of voice when there is a infiltration into the nerves okay uh, by malignancy uh, then only it will cause uh, hoarseness of voice usually uh, but yeah we should we take this that's okay uh, then other any other thing any other compressive features the yeah, dysphagia in a very so large patient may just complain to uh, come with you just change of change in voice yes. okay that should uh, alert you okay in, uh, in uh, like uh, in terms of malignant uh, changes of a uh, swelling yes, next next fast no 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 what are the other sim uh, pressure symptoms possible tell me 
So in a very large one, you have dysphagia also. Yeah, this is what I wanted to know. Okay, dysphagia is very rare or unlikely symptom. Okay, because uh, you know, as we know, esophagus is a very muscular organ which is present behind the okay. trachea. so it's not possible uh, literally to compress the trachea cartilage structure and then to compress the uh, esophagus it's not at all possible okay so what really happens is like you said it's a discomfort more than the dysphagia they will have discomfort okay even if it uh, compresses the muscular organ it will go on side to the lateral side and it will somehow escape there will be no dysphagia as such but in the first phase of de uh, deglutition when the uh, this uh, uh, the trachea moves up okay for the swallowing that time the sw uh, uh, swelling touches the uh, upper part and that may cause some kind of discomfort while swallowing okay so you should make it very clear between a discomfort and the dysphagia and other things uh, uh, could be other uh, uh, pressure symptoms could be like you said hoarseness of voice involvement of the recurrent laryngeal nerve if any malignancy if it is uh, infiltrates the uh, carotid artery what it can cause Infiltration, carotid artery. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm not sure, sir. Yeah, it can cause reduced blood supply to the brain. Oh, it can cause. Okay, even if the swelling or malignancy goes beyond the carotid sheath, and what is there behind posteriorly, posterior carotid sheath? There is a sympathetic plexus, right? Horner's if it is in also in all that, it can cause very good Horner's syndrome. What are the features of Horner's syndrome? All those we should know. Okay, good. So. next thing is uh, if it's a malignancy uh, this is a pressure symptoms done then if you are suspecting malignancy then you have to ask for the any uh, metastatic features okay first you have to confirm that it's a meta uh, malignancy by any constitutional symptoms then you have to look for any features of metastasis in this way you will classify the uh, hopi got my point nandini yes, first uh, prove that it's a thyroid swelling second the probable etiology for the goiter then the functional status okay then comes the or any pressure effects are there okay then if it's malignancy if you uh, malignant features are there then go for, uh, look for the metastatic features yes sir okay so uh, you told that uh, uh, there is a weight gain lethargy so it's a long standing goiter right so yes, there are chances of some uh, functional impairment so in case of long standing say multi nodular goiter or okay what are the uh, what is the possible uh, complications sir yeah sir so, other than cosmetic problems you could have secondary thyrotoxicosis very good and uh, it could also have a malignant transformation follicular carcinoma very good and other than that hemorrhage in the nodule or all very good. Or the compressive symptoms so like uh, tracheal uh, Uh, count obstruction, obstruction and also if you have that axial uh, calcification around the okay so uh, they will come with the uh, this uh, strider acute it's an acute emergency you have to immediately do the tracheostomy in that time okay yes, so these are all the possible uh, 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 and secondary uh, thyrotoxicos features what are the th secondary thyrotoxicos features with so this patient may present to you why so i am asking is patient may just come with uh, congestive heart failure or just pedal edema or some just palpitation or chest pain that time you have to make sure that his uh, functional status uh, is uh, okay in uh, how to assess for his functional status of thyroid okay so as you mentioned secondary thyrotoxicosis will be mainly cardiovascular features sir uh -huh. okay 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 so uh, more in favor of okay cvs okay rs in primary thyrotoxicosis they'll have more of cns, CNS related symptoms correct Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. So, what are the features of uh, hypothyroidism? Hypothyroidism. I am asking because in this uh, MNG multinodular goiter, initially there will be uh, features of uh, thyrotoxicosis. Initially, because of the hypertrophy and the uh, uh, increase in the size, there will be thyrotoxicosis features will there. Later on, next still longer duration, all the a nodule or the thyroid tissue becomes inactive and they may go into hypothyroidism yes sir. okay so uh, patient with the multi nodular goiter or any uh, uh, solitary no nodule of thyroid they initially come with the features of thyrotoxicosis and later on in the later stage they may also present with 
hypothyroidism so, so we should be looking for both okay so i already mentioned what are the features of uh, thyrotoxicosis and hypothyroidism so we will not go into the details so, so other next, than this like if it's a female who is in her uh, men- like still in a fertile period that time i have menorrhagia menorrhagia okay 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 good fine bone pain and other so links for you are looking for the metastasis right yes sir okay next slide okay uh Oh no, comorbidities. No history of previous what surgery? Previous surgery you are interested in? So here, um, any surgery of the neck would make the treatment of this condition uh, difficult. And also, like if the, if this is a recurrent goiter, to know you could see for scar of the thigh, like previous surgery oh. scar. Good. No history of drug intake. Very very important. So why? So because um, a lot of goitrogenic drugs are. very good it see one of the possibilities in this age see 51 year old uh, lady having goiter most probable cause could be it can uh, cannot be uh, what is it physiological like you said no uh, yes. there is no in at this age and uh, uh, it cannot be uh, what is that uh, dishormonogenesis okay so most probable cause here could be uh, yeah. goitrogens it cannot be even iodine deficiency also at this stage can it be no sir so most common cause for the goiter is iodine deficiency yeah. is it uh, nowadays it's not very common because everyone gets iodine salt, salt. okay and at 51 year suddenly uh, cannot be because of iodine deficiency so like think like that think in that terms try to rule out one by one the etiological factors so most probable uh, cause could be any goitrogens so we have to find out what is a goitrogen it could be food it could be a, a drug or it could be environmental so many are there so uh, can you please tell Uh, what are the goitrogenic drugs we commonly use? So sulfonamides and uh, okay. oral hypoglycemic agents. Like sulfonylureas. Okay. Yes, okay then. Uh, uh, lithium. Okay, good. That's Most right. of the antipsychotic drugs. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay then. Carbamazepine, rifampicin. Okay. Okay, antiepileptics. Okay. Yeah. And uh, thiocyanates are seen in cigarette smokers. yeah okay very good very important that he brought this out okay so thiocyanides these are present in uh, uh, many uh, like uh, many drugs also and in many foods also okay thiocyanide this is this also goitrogen okay so especially it's uh, uh, present in the thiocyanides present in the smokers so lady smokers okay they are prone for a higher incidence of uh, thyroid uh, the swellings next Any other drugs you know? Any mm-hmm. anti-thyroid drugs you know? So anti-thyroid drugs uh, in hyperthyroidism we get carbamazepine, uh, car- uh, propylthiazepine. Okay, you told. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So what are the uh, there could be food? If she is not taking any uh, drugs, means there could be some food which is causing that. So what are the possible uh, foods which may uh, cause this? उट फाइन No history of irradiation. Irradiation to what? Legs, sir? <laughs> no, sir. No, any. There was no previous history of X-rays or CT scan or anything. Like no, 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 no. Irradiation to where? No history of irradiation to neck. head and neck region. It should yes. be very specific. Okay. So then they will ask you. The question will be: What are all the conditions where you give uh, uh, ionizing radiation? You should nowadays we don't usually do, but in early days they used to. From some of the uh, skin conditions, they used to give. uh radiation therapy yes. you know them no, not 
Read. Next. Next slide. Personal history. Uh, okay. Very each point is very very important. Appetite is it important? Yes, sir, because to differentiate between hypo and hyperthyroidism, where is um, hypothyroidism, even with the normal appetite, there'll be unintentional weight gain. That is the most important feature, okay? okay. Weight loss, despite having a good appetite, is one of the classical features of thyrotoxicosis. We should be well aware and we should uh, uh, ask this history in detail, okay? And okay, you are written no excessive consumption of goitrogens. Still, you might have asked about some, but there could be some other. Uh, food uh, which you may not know or which a patient may not be aware of so that can be causing this uh, goiter okay bowel and bladder each personal history each thing is important sleep is important yes sir sleep is important because in primary thyrotoxicosis you can have yeah. CNS symptoms you have insomnia and anxiety which could uh, yeah exactly bowel and bladder have bowel uh, uh, bladder habits important Yes, so the same way um, in bowel habits, like if you could see in hyperthyroidism, diarrhea could be a complaint. In hyperthyroidism, good. in a mixed even attack, constipation could be a complaint. Okay. Uh, see, addict addictions are, yeah, especially like you said, uh, like uh, nicotine or yeah. the smoking, all this can cause uh, risk factors for a uh, uh, goiter. Okay, good. Next one. Most important history, okay. Uh, yes, considering uh, she is a female, also uh, in the thyroid case, uh, yes, both in breast and thyroid cases, menstrual history is, should be detailed one. Okay, so she has already attained the menopause, so nothing, no, nothing significant, right? Yes, okay, sir. next. Okay, no sim. Okay, uh, family history. Why it's important? So it is um, a lot of the thyroid conditions are hereditary. For example, Hashimoto's has a nine percent increased risk uh, in familial like so. So hello. So am I audible? Kishan, so your uh, mic is. I'm audible now. I'm audible now. Nandini. Nandini, am I audible? I'm audible now. Okay. I think she's not. Yes, so now you're audible. Not now, now we are audible. You are out, you had lost the connection. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you had lost the connection. That's what I was wondering. Uh, my connection is okay, and others members also telling that I am audible. Okay, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Okay, yeah, so family, yeah, family is because, oh, no, you, yeah, you don't need to share, right? Uh, you can you please start sharing, sir. Uh, PPT again. It's gone. Yes, sir. Okay. I, we were asking about the familial uh, history. Family yes, history. Yes, sir. Very so important. In familial history, um, in endemic regions, uh, more than one family member can have the same complaint of goiter. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, in uh, Hashim, like diseases like Hashimoto's, there's like a 9% increase risk of hereditary, 9% increase hereditary risk. And in um, in um, in like also in, in familially the familial enzyme deficiencies could be present because of like if the thyroperoxidase the oxidase peroxidase enzyme is deficient then the iodide oxidation would be um, 
like production of thyroid hormones would be deficient and then any, uh, any syndromes you know syndromes familial syndromes are not so sure, sure men syndrome those are not sure, sure. please read about men what the what comp components of men 2a to b okay Yes, multiple endocrine neoplasia okay allergic history fine next next slide okay no features of hypo or hyperthyroidism so patient is a uh, having a swelling in a youth thyroid state no compressive features only just discomfort while swallowing is there okay otherwise there are no significant compressive features and uh, there are no features of malignancy have you ruled out malignancy yes, so there was no um, secondary swellings in the neck or any other swellings in the body there was no bone pain and also she never reported any uh, episodes of hemoptysis or okay next examination okay please present general physical examination yeah, there is nothing the... called nandini this for the uh, for all everyone this makes this common mistake there is nothing called general physical examination okay it's just physical examination under which there is a general survey of the entire body yes, physically sir. physic is only one so it cannot be general physical examination okay yes. it's a uh, standard books you refer it's clearly given physical examination under which there is a general survey okay don't mix up both and never write in your examination at least here it's okay i understand there is a lack of time and all to prepare but in exam never ever write uh, short forms short forms okay these uh, htn pr gpe all those things are not allowed in the exams at least okay yes sir because what is gpe for you may, may not be same for the examiner okay so at least at this ug level try to uh, avoid this short forms and all clear okay. yes sir hmm. due concern was taken patient was examined in a well lit room patient was conscious cooperative and well oriented to time place and person patient is moderately built and nourished weight 57 kg height 5.2 ft bmi 23 vitals patient is a febrile bp 130 over 80 mm hg pulse rate 86 beats per minute spo2 98% Pala, sinusitis, clubbing, ictus, lymphadenopathy, and edema were absent. Head-to-toe -to -to examination were normal findings noted. Okay, what will you look for? Actually, very very important in a thyroid case. Now, this one particular slide is most important. Okay, most important slide. So, what will you look for? Especially uh, coming to the build and nourishment. How it's important? So, build and nourishment can easily uh, help us. Uh, differentiate between hypo and hyperthyroidism so Wonderful. in in a, a hyperthyroidism patient there will be muscle wasting the patient will be thin and un, or maybe underweight so she will also there also be excessive sweating and in a hypothyroidism the patient may be overweight and overweight and hypothyroidism in mm. hypothyroidism mm. overweight or obese okay okay uh, and bmi again it's a reflective of the nutrition levels and uh, vitals okay uh, better to measure the temperature and write don't write a febrile or fe uh, febrile okay yes, sir, yes, sir. again b p p r all those things should be avoided pulse rate is very important why so pulse rate here is very important because in secondary thyrotoxicosis uh, we can feel a lot of like it can present with irregular um, flow and volume and there could be tachycardia Import Yeah, tachycardia could be there. All the ectopics can be there, or arrhythmias could be there. In yes. that way, pulse is important. Okay. Uh, then, uh, yeah, don't write for paler cyanosis, clubbing, and all absent. Better uh, infers that we should have been present, but it's absent. Yes. Better write is no paler cyanosis, clubbing, ectus. Okay. But you have to look for uh, what's why uh, you have to look for all these things. Very important. Yes. Okay. What is this? Uh, uh thyroid acropathy you know thyroid acropathy so acropathy is seen it's a clubbing so it's seen in hyperthyroidism it's a feature of hyperthyroidism there will be swelling uh, clubbing in the um, fingers and in the toes 
edema possible in uh, the thyroid case yes sir in uh, hyperthyroidism there will be pre tibial mixed edema mm -hmm. then and also uh, retro bulbar edema okay then in this case possible in this case edema possible in this case edema so it's a u thyroid so sir Huh? Okay, no, no. Okay, oh, considering not okay, you thought right. Uh, right. Is... In case this uh, patient goes into complication like secondary thyroid toxicosis, because okay. of that, there could be pedal edema. Pedal edema, good, good. Okay, so head to toe examination. Here's most important thing. What do you look for in a head to toe examination? Can you please briefly tell about what do you look for in thyroid? It's very important. So I signs, so if the answer is I signs, I actually put it in. From starting from the hairs, hair fall. Uh, if you hair fall is Most uh, characteristic of uh, hypothyroidism, more than the hairs, uh, uh, the scalp hairs, the uh, eyebrows. You have to look for the eyebrows, the lateral uh, loss of lateral eyebrows. Okay, are more in favor of. It's called metamorphosis. Also, uh, uh, favor of hypothyroidism. One of the characteristics. Okay, yes, then eyes. Yeah, you have to look for eye signs. If they are present, you have to separately write about all the uh, eye signs. Okay, then what about the uh oral cavity so in oral cavity um what you all you look, you look for oral hygiene sir no 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 what is there in the oral cavity thank oh so you can see tremors like um if you ask the patient to hold out the tongue and you ask them to hold it for half a minute and you can not see for tremors in And then what else? Tongue. So in tongue, because um, the foramen cecum. No, 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 no. If there is a macroglossia, is there? What it suggests you of? It's hypothyroidism. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, by faces, face is important. Entire face. Yes, sir. In uh, um, it helps in like the presentation of the patient helps in us to diagnose hypothyroidism. Like, If the patient is dull, lethargic, that could be uh, because of hypothyroidism. Or if the patient is excitable and then um, kind of nervous or anxious, that could be hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism. So everything in the uh, physical examination, no, each and every point and every part is very very important and gives you significant clues. Even the for you told patient is conscious, cooperative, and oriented. Even this mental status also very very important here. Primary. Like you said already, uh, in uh, hyperthyrotoxicosis, uh, patient will be very much agitated, anxious. Okay, whereas in hypothyroid, a patient will be very dull, lethargic. Uh, okay, uh, maybe kindly disoriented, and uh, even if it's a congenital hypothyroidism, they'll be uh, IQ level levels will be very low. It's called creatinine. Creatinine, right? yes, sir. So all those things, mental state also very very important. Next uh, faces, you should have written about the faces. And uh, what about the skin? Normal skin is very important here to examine the skin. So skin uh, moist or excessive sweating could be because of hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. And then if there is uh, dry skin and if there's inelastic and dry skin, that could be that will be because of mixed edema and hypothyroidism. Good, good, very good. So next slide, please. Okay, local examination. Please present fully. Local examination of the neck done at eye level of the patient. Inspection: swelling of five into three, five into four centimeters is situated in the right of the midline of the neck, which moves with deglutition and does not move with protrusion of drum. Nodular, a nodular surface is noted, and the skin over the swelling appears normal. Trachea is central. No other visible uh, swellings in. No other visible swelling in the neck is noted. No ocular signs are observed, and no tremors. Okay, present fully. Our patient inspectory findings are confirmed. No local rise in temperature. Non tender swelling. Swelling involves the right lobe of and the isthmus of the thyroid gland. Margins are well defined and non tender with a multi nodular surface. Three nodules were palpated, firm in consistency. Consistency. A uh, lower. Uh, Limit of the uh, thyroid gland, the uh, lower lower limit of the swelling is also palpable. Rest of the thyroid, rest of the thyroid was non-palpable. Central trachea is confirmed, and no other um, 
swellings in the neck. Percussion, a resonant note was heard, and auscultation, no grooming is heard. Okay, come back. What are the various methods you know of examining a thyroid swelling? So various methods for examining is um, a physiolos method, where if the uh, swelling is not very apparent, then you can ask the patient to place both the arms, interlock both the uh, palms at the occiput and extend the neck. At um, at which point you could easily appreciate the swelling. And mm -hmm. Lari's method, where um, you press. This is called physiolos method, alna. Right? Yes. Physiolos. Okay, good. In a very Lari. short and obese. Uh, on uh, neck, okay, you can exactly. do that to make it very prominent. Uh, ask the patient to hold the hand behind like this occiput and try to uh, put pressure, like uh, try to extend, okay. Yes, sir. The okay, then so that the the neck the becomes more prominent. If there is a swelling, it becomes more prominent. That's the first okay one way. Yes, sir. So in this way, where to do sense. and uh, in whom to do, it's very important. Okay, not doing all the tests in everyone. Okay. Yes, sir. So, mm, next. In this method, if you get a uniform enlargement, then it will uh, show more towards a cycle, a physiological goiter or, or a colloid goiter. And if there's a nodular uh, appearance, like then it could be because of a nodular goiter. And then you can also palpate for aberrant swell, like swellings in the lateral part of the neck using this. No, method. no, no. What are you telling? I didn't get you. So the different. Like so the different examinations. Which one are you telling now? Physiolos over next. Uh, then Lahe's method. So oh, Lahe's. Okay, okay, good, good. What is that? So in this, the examiner stands in front of the patient and at eye level, and then he pushes the gland to one side, and this way you can appreciate the different nodules of the gland very well, sir. Especially which are present in the lateral and the posterior aspect. That's important. Yes, if they okay, you have to appreciate the the sides and the posterior aspect of the uh, swelling. It's better to do with the lahes. You push from one side and you examine the other other side. Okay, this is called yes. lahes. Then, uh, then the Kriles method. So in the Kriles method again, the examiner stands in front of the patient and mm -hmm. this is to appreciate the nodularity of the if there's any nodularity in the swelling. So the examiner holds a thumb over the swelling and the patient is instructed to swallow while examining. And you can for small the small swellings we do this. Okay. Very small swellings are there, okay, uh, which you can't uh, hold out the hand or the entire palm cannot be used. So use using Kriles method for single small uh, solitary nodules and all. You use Kriles method. Okay, then what is the normal method of examining thyroid? Normally, so you can stand behind the patient, extend the neck, and uh, extend the neck or flex the neck. What is that method called? It's a Cocker's method. Cocker, Cocker, you know, Theodore Cocker is the father. Okay, of this, uh, the favorite, most favorite question of any examiner is in any thyroid uh, uh, cases. What are the contributions of Cocker? Even uh, we, I still remember we had got it as a five marker. In theory, also it can be asked. What are the? Please no, write it down. Okay, no, no, it's so many are there. You better uh, uh, read. Uh, Cocker, uh, sign. Okay, no, still there are so many. Ten, twelve are there. You can read. Okay, one is that Cocker's uh, contributions. Second thing is in uh, surgery, they'll ask you about berries. What are the berries? Named berries, you know. Uh, in this, the berry signs are for carotid pulsations. And okay, then, uh, then ligament. Ligament of berry, very good. Next. That is berries aneurysm, you know. Berry aneurysm. Berry yes. picking. Berry aneurysm. Okay, so all these are the favorite questions of any examiners. Uh, okay, so normal method is of examining the uh, thyroid is Cocker's method okay. by standing behind the patient, ask the patient to flex the neck, not okay. extend. By extending this, all the strap muscles or the sternocleidomastic muscles become contracted. So it will be, cannot uh, really appreciate. By just flexing the neck, all these muscles get relaxed. So now from behind, okay, standing behind, you can examine, okay, for using these four fingers. And using thumb, you can support the nape of the neck. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, there is a normal method. Uh, both the lobes and the isthmus, you have to examine. Okay. Now, coming to the uh, next slide, palpation. Uh, you already mentioned here. The surface. Uh, okay. Surface is? What is the possible uh, surface here? So, if in case it's a diffuse swelling, then there will be a smooth surface. 
ಮೈ Uh, uh, fourth year MBBS examination, I had got a thyroid case. The case uh, examiner was, we were sitting in the room and discussing. Suddenly, I was presenting. I told the consistency is firm. Then the examiner got a doubt. Are you sure? He asked. Yes, sir, I told. Then immediately he woke up and went to near the patient bedside. And he examined for himself. Luckily, the consistency, uh, he also got it to be firm. Oh. So, I was saved. And uh, the presentation went on really well then after that. so uh, most important factor uh, that will decide uh, that is consistency having said that there is a uh, twist in the thyroid okay what is thyroid paradox you know no sir what is thyroid paradox i am not sure sir. consistency so could tell me here it is firm in consistency okay yes, can it be so- soft in consistency or cystic in consistency yes sir if it's a colloid counter it will be soft in consistency Okay, in multinodular goiter, what they will have usually? In multinodular goiter, they form in, like in, if they have cystic spaces, that will be soft. Okay, you told, what are the complications of uh, uh, this multinodular goiter later on? They can have? Follicular. They told something at the end. Follicular carcinoma. Oh, calcification, sir. Yeah, calcification. So, what is the consistency in calcification? a uh, more firm consistency ha huh, sorry firm consistency no normal thyroid gland is firm in consistency whereas after if it's calcified it will become hard hard okay yes. whereas there is there is a cystic or colloid is present or if there is a hemorrhage into the cyst is present then it could be soft to cystic in consistency so in the same swelling you can have multiple okay even the benign swellings could be hard in consistency whereas if there's a malignancy okay any papillary or follicular malign uh, carcinoma if there is a necrosis of the tumor what will be the consistency then soft in consistency yeah okay so even a malignancy can have soft in consistency whereas even a benign swelling can have hard in consistency in case of thyroid so it's called thyroid paradox usually hard consistency means we are in more favor of malignancy only right yes, so sir. but here it can be vice versa so and uh, in a multinodular goiter they can have variable consistency what is variable consistency so it's uh, firm and soft in consistency yeah in some places it consistent because of hemorrhage in some areas it could be uh, hard because of the calcification okay in some areas it could be internodular internodular tissue as a normal tissue present it could be firm in consistency so a same swelling can have two or three types of consistency clear it's variable yes. consistency good uh yeah trachea is central okay in a big swelling it could be uh, the trail sign and you know no what is trail sign how to look for the uh, deviation of trachea both by palpation and the auscultation you should know auscultation so we keep the um, the stethoscope okay on. hope you know i'm i'm sure you know that okay next uh, have you done that uh, special tests are there no two three special tests for thyroid have you done that special tests sir yeah the some name test? tests are there not in this case yeah definitely in this case you need not do because there is symptomatically there are no compressive features uh, there so if you don't do also it's a uh, can be justified but so uh, there is like uh, pemberton's test some, yeah exactly there is some cocker's test uh, so berries berries perform because uh, since strider is a emergency case and emergency what is strider so strider is like when the wind is it's a whistling sound that's heard when the uh, air is moving through a narrow trachea so narrow trachea wonderful very good answer that's so so how do you demonstrate you don't know there could be obstruction but it is not evident here yes. so how do you demonstrate for strider so here you can perform the cocker sensor where like a compressor strider is elicited in not cocker sign cocker test cocker okay. test because cocker sign is different yes okay sir okay tell me cocker test how do you do? Uh, compression of the like the if 
uh, if you press on the thyroid swelling, so compression of the trachea because of your thyroid, thyroid swelling can elicit a stridor. Mm -hmm. That's called Cocker's test. Cocker's test. Good. What is Berry's sign? So Berry's sign, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but is it that um, carotid pulsation can be felt in cervical? Carotid signs? Carot I'm not sure. So. In a thyroid case, you should know. Okay. Uh, Berry's sign is See, usually what happens if the benign swelling is there, very big, huge, uh, multinodular goiter is there. What will do is, usually it, is it will push the, the carotid uh, sheet laterally and posteriorly yes, sir. if there is a benign swelling. Because in a malignant swelling, it will invade or infiltrate into the carotid sheet and then into the artery. Okay, So there will be obstruction to the flow and there will be absent pulsation. Okay. So, absent carotid pulsation in a thyroid uh, swelling is called Berry's sign positive. Yes, Clear? In benign swelling, it can get lateralized, uh, whereas in the malignancy, if it's absent. infiltrated, there could be absent carotid pulsation. It's called Berry's sign positive. What is uh, Pemberton's test? So, Pemberton's test in this case I didn't perform because there was lower limit was passable. Very but good. in case. Very good. Um, if we suspect the retrosternal extension, then uh, we can ask the patient to lift the hands above the shoulder level. At which stage, you see congestion of the face and also dilatation of the vessels in the neck and the upper chest. So. Okay, good. It's a, uh, you should do only when there is a lower limit of this mar lower uh, margin of the swelling is not uh, okay. visible or the not palpable. Only then you do this test. Not in all the cases. Wonderful yes. application of your knowledge. Okay. So then there is no, if the lower limit is palpable, then there is no point to look for lateral uh, extension, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So you told about all the uh, specific, next. Okay. So percussion, what is it? Resonant node, where are you percussed? Sir, so, uh, per focus uh, in the intercostal space, sir. Okay. So you should mention, we are uh, looking at the, we are doing the, uh, Local examination of the uh, swelling in the thyroid and your uh, suddenly come to the chest, resonance or percussion of the chest. How can it be? So, because um, the reason would be twofold. So, in case if there was a suspicion of retrosternal extension, that time you could hear a dull note on percussion. Uh, also, if there any. You don't know, you told know there is no role uh, already, uh, there is no uh, extension you told already. So, to look for media standard lymph nodes. Is it a malignant? Uh, uh, so, uh, swelling to rule out metastasis. How can you? Without there is a malignancy, how can there be uh, metastasis? Any other that... reason? Yeah, you you can substantiate. See, all these are not wrong, but you need to uh, properly substantiate why you are written. Okay. So I want so, to complete the examination. Not complete. Okay. There should be some reason you should give. Okay. See, even the uh, this thing. Uh, if you want to say something, no. You can say there could be uh, substernal or uh, what are the types of uh, what is that uh, retrosternal goiter? There, so there, are three there, are the, there are three types, sir: substernal type, a plunging goiter, and the um, intrathoracic goiter. Yeah, they could have just intrathoracic goiter, okay, yes, involving right lobe and the isthmus. So how do we manage this case now? So in this case, we can go for a, a management. So investigations first, we have to confirm our clinical findings with the thyroid function test. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we can we go for an ultrasound of the neck, sir. In an ultrasound, you can rule out malignancy. Come uh, you, you can rule out malignancy. Uh, confirm the benign swelling, and then you can do a um, ultrasound guided FNDC, sir. Mm -hmm. Why ultrasound guided in such a big swelling? Why do you want ultrasound guided FNDC? So, because the consistency is altered in the multinational mm -hmm. So, if consistency is altered, wherever there is a firm inconsistency, you will uh, take FNAC from that area. Okay, sir. Hmm? Correct? Okay, yes, sir. You mean to say there will be some areas of necrosis, right? If yes, you uh, break from there, it will be give false reports, right? That's what yes, you are worried about. Okay. Yes, so, in such things, you can palpate uh, the firm areas and then you can, yeah, but always better. USG guided uh, FNS is better. But having said that, in the places where it's not available, such a uh, uh, the specialists are not there, then you can do 
very for small swellings or very posterior swellings near the uh, vascular uh, thing arteries in that areas uh, you can go for uh, usg guided or in otherwise the big swellings you can directly go for direct uh, fnac okay yes, what other what other test you want to do after fnac sir sorry after fnac in sir in this case we can go for okay, now fnac is uh, showing uh, colloid goiter yes sir and uh, usg is showing telling it's a uh, multiple nodules multi multiple nodular uh, so multi nodular goiter and tsh is normal yes sir so your uh, clinical diagnosis is correct yes sir okay so non toxic multi nodular goiter okay uh, so what's your next step so in this case we could go for surgery so hemi since the other lobe is non palpable and normal we'll go for um, hemi thyroidectomy Nandini, Nandini, Nandini. So far, you've done really well. This one can, one answer can land up you in Sue. Okay, Sue. Sir, I, I, I know total thyroidectomy. It, um, it is not possible. Then why didn't you tell? Why didn't you tell that? So, but in this case, since the left lobe is normal, I. So left lobe is normal. So, so. So thought that you could just do hemi thyroidectomy. No. Okay. No. Not really. Nowadays, for everything, even though benign or malignant, the norm is you have to go okay. for total thyroidectomy. Only role of hemi thyroidectomy nowadays is okay. Uh, only two things. One is to do biopsy if the FNAC or this thing is uh, inconclusive. Then to uh, for the biopsy we do hemi thyroidectomy. That's the one. Okay. Second thing is if the patient is not willing for the total thyroid uh, like thyroid replacement therapy later on. in the lifelong very young patient yes, and uh, you are very sure that it's totally benign uh, swelling some cyst is there which may not recur later on if you are so sure then only then you can go for hemi thyroidectomy otherwise it's always better to go for total thyroidectomy why total thyroidectomy so recurrence rate is less yeah, see, so this multinodular goiter and uh, a colloid goiter is known to recur okay so once I if it's recur second time doing a surgery is very 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 difficult in that plane all the plane after the surgery all the most of the plane will be lost Uh, anatomy will be lost there will be lot of fibrosis so again uh, re exploring that area is very very difficult okay so uh, it's always better to go for uh, total thyroidectomy clear and before that before thyroidectomy i have expected you to answer uh, tell uh, one more test that is very important nowadays in all the patients we have to get it done that is ct scan huh? not ct scan ct scan is not mandated in all the cases ct mri has not much role in here okay unless it's a malignancy Uh, is indirect laryngoscopy uh, yeah for um, okay. uh, yes sir i read that it's for um, not for, for the the vocal cords legal purposes because okay. it might be good for some other yeah there will be occult uh, uh, recurrent laryngeal palsies vocal cord palsies could be there so you yeah. have to document beforehand because uh, during the operation if the nerve gets injured they may then uh, yeah, blame sir. you later on okay so we have to be careful ideal should be done beforehand so you uh, read about this uh, bethetsa classification what is bethetsa classification of fnac so, report no no you just read all this theory aspect i am not going to ask you now i And, did uh, what is, what is, just what is, to what is tyrads upon fnac the tyrads is, is uh, um, thyroid imaging and reporting data systems hello okay 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 i can hear you Okay, all those things are theory. You should read. You should read. Okay. Now the next question is okay. Total thyroidectomy. So, what are the complications of total uh, total thyroidectomy? So, hemorrhage is the most okay. important uh, complication. Okay. What is primary? What is a uh, uh, secondary? Hemorrhage. What is primary hemorrhage? What are so the types of hemorrhage? Primary hemorrhage will be immediately like. Uh, During surgery, sir. Secondary hemorrhage will be maybe because of a tension hematoma. It could be later on after surgery within ten days. Mm -hmm. Okay. What other uh, complications? So other complications uh, in case of thyroid surgery, there could be a uh, injury to the nerves, so either an external laryngeal nerve or a recurrent laryngeal nerve. Injury. External laryngeal nerve directly. So that is. More common than recurrent laryngeal nerve injury. Okay, next. 
then um, we could have laryngeal edema so hypoparathyroidism if in case during thyroidectomy if the um, parathyroid glands are injured or even they are removed and then our tension hematoma sir and also hypothyroidism yeah hypothyroidism so uh, post operatively immediate uh, post op hmm laryngomalacia also okay uh, immediate uh, post operative period what will you look for the third day patient started uh, uh, having a tingling uh, sensation or the uh, uh, perioral region yes. what is suspect Oh, oh, hypoparathyroidism, that could be the schwastic center. No, no, it's a hypocalcemia because yeah, of hypoparathyroidism. Yes, Clear? Yes. Should answer by step by step. Yes, sir. Perioral numbness or tingling sensation is the first sign or symptom okay, of the hypocalcemia, which is because of the uh, hypoparathyroidism. Yes, what is Chostek's sign? That's sir, different. Chostek's sign is like um, if you... Uh, If you tap over the area of the facial nerve, there'll be twitching of the facial muscles, sir, because there'll be neuromuscular hyperexcitability. What is a uh, trojo sign? Trojo sign is carpal tunnel spasm, sir, so because if you inflate the BP cuff, if you put the BP pressure cuff and inflate it, then if you inflate above the systolic BP, that time you can see carpal tunnel spasm. Okay. 